Welcome to Shreveport Connection with Tommy. This video is on your Monday Night Raw results. And Superstar, that hasn't been posted yet. But uh, the Superstars uh, matches were Sin Cara vs. Damian Sandow, Tamina Snooker vs. Natalia, And that was all from St. Louis the night uh, before Raw was taped. I don't know if there was any dark matches. I know there was a main event dark match. And I'll post the results for from after the Raw video. <clears throat> WWE Hall of Famer Holly Race was also in attendance from Raw in St. Louis. The children singing with Bray Wyatt on tonight's Raw was from the high school choir from Ladue School District in St. Louis. According to their Twitter from earlier in the day, the Ladue Foundation tweeted Bray Wyatt on the other day and said, At Bray Wyatt, uh, WWE Bray Wyatt, uh, our choir is fired up to sing your theme song tonight. At Real Hugh Jackman. Hashtag Raw St. Louis. Hashtag Great Opportunity at Jessica Bach. Uh, WWE will also be running a live event in Bogota, Colombia later this year. They will hold an event on October 15th at the 8,000 seat Coliseo Tuberto El Campin. As noted, indie wrestler Drake Younger finished up his commitments uh, this past weekend and will be reporting to WWE Performance Center for NXT next week. Younger is mainly being brought in to work as a referee. Just recently, I believe today, WWE has signed Levona Zarki. I will post a photo of her from uh, <clears throat> at the end of the video. And she's an actress and model from California. She is being sent to developmental after she works out a try a tryout after she worked out a tryout back in December. And she reports to the Performance Center in Orlando. And again, posting the video. I mean, uh, the uh, picture at the end of this, this uh, video. Uh, Friday's, uh, this past Friday's SmackDown episode with The Shield running wild after 2.670 million viewers, down from the previous week of 2.757 million. SmackDown was the number one regular TV show on cable for that night, according to Nielsen Ratings. Uh, announced on tonight's Raw, Adam Rose will be making his Raw debut on next week's show. Michael Cole saw noted on Raw tonight that John Cena granted his 400 second, 400 third, 400 fourth wish through the Make a Wish Foundation before tonight's Raw in St. Louis. <clears throat> El Torito versus Horace Vogel in a wheel C match has been added to the Extreme Rules pre show for this Sunday. And here's a, uh, going to be a video of the WWE Legends House stars. Talking about what they missed on uh, from most being inside the house. Sheamus versus Bray Wyatt has been announced for Tuesday night's live WWE main event on the network, and that will be taped tomorrow night. Good old Jr. tweeted following about tonight's Raw opening segment with the Wyatt family and their kids' choir. The opening segment on hashtag Raw St. Louis was m memorable, creepy, provoked thought. And like a blind date, memorable opening segment on hashtag Raw St. Louis. Announcers will undoubtedly be at a loss for words. Hope there's speculation nonetheless. Interesting show, big elements to open. Hashtag Raw St. Louis. Hashtag creepy. What are they doing? Following TNA? Creepy little bastard. It sounds all thing. Former pro wrestling broadcaster Lee Marshall passed away this, uh, this Saturday, according to KFBK Radio in California, uh, California. The story does not list the cause of death and notes that Marshall's friends were offering condolences on his Facebook page and you can read a beautiful story at KFBK.com. Marshall also worked as the ring announcer at WrestleMania 2 for the Los Angeles portion of the card. He did a lot of radio work and was also the voice a Faucet Flake cereal mascot on the Tiger in recent years. That's one I didn't know. And you can view the Facebook page at facebook.com backslash lee.marshall.12. The Dark Man event from tonight's Raw event was advertised as Daniel Bryan, John Cena, and The Shield versus Randy Orton, Batista, and the Wyatt family in a 10-man tag match. 
And that was all thanks to .NET reader, Brian Werner. Broadcast team member, Alex Riley, turned 33 years old, was born April 28, 1981. Happy birthday, A. Riley. Violet J, a.k.a. Joseph Bruce, from the Insane Clown Posse, turned 42 years old, born April 28, 1972. Frank Gotch was born on, on April 27, 1878. He died on December 16, 1979, at the age of 39. The official cause of death was listed as a uremic poisoning. Former WWE WWF wrestler Vladimir Kozlov, a.k.a. Oleg Prudius, turned 35 on this past Sunday. He was born April 27, 1979, continued to work as a part-time actor. Former TNA wrestler Johnny Devine, a.k.a. John Parsonage, turned 40 years old on Sunday. He was born April 27, 1974. Of, future Hall of Famer, Famer Kane, a.k.a. Glenn Jacobs, turned 47 years old on Saturday. He was born April 26, 1967. The Amazing Red turned 32. Ron the Yeti, Reyes, uh, Rice turned uh, 44 and Tank Abbott turned 49. The late Jerry Blackwell was born April 26, 1949. Longtime AWA star died on January 22, 1995 due to complications from injuries sustained in an automobile accident. If WWE to do an Evolution vs. The Shield War Games match, the only arena booked between now and SummerSlam that could hold a double ring setup would be the Tampa Bay Times Forum in Tampa, Florida. Thanks to uh, reader Josh Morrow, and he has purchased his Battleground tickets and noted that it had an interactive iPad area set up to help customers choose their tickets. Shows the arena being set up for a large set and one ring. So it looks like traditional war games isn't in WWE's plans in any, any time soon. Josh also noted that the tickets went on sale this past Saturday and as of 10 a.m., this morning, all cheap seats were sold out, and only the ringside $60 seats rem uh, tickets remain. Or $60 floor seats. As noted, WWE is planning a Brothers of Destruction DVD set on Kane and The Undertaker for later this year. Apparently, it will be the, the same rivalry format as the 2011 Shawn Michaels vs. Bret Hart DVD was done in, uh, but likely without the, uh, the sit down interviews. Sting vs. Undertaker Fantasy Warfare video. Post uh, the link for that. WWE NXT star Baron Corbin was apparently been repackaged and has been managed by Raquel Diaz, the former Shaw Guerrero, that recently did a shoot together where Baron was seated in on the motor motorcycle, and I'll show a picture of that at the end of the video. Stephanie, Stephanie McMahon was reportedly very upset from last week's Raw script being leaked, leaked out uh, to the point that she was described as mad enough that she could beat Ronda Rousey in a UFC fight. Paper, that's why paper scripts are, are no longer used in WWE offices, so the script was likely just left behind in the arena. WWE today announced that its global online charity auction, Superstars for Kids, has raised more than $400,000 benefiting boys and girls clubs and New Orleans Saints quarterback Drew Brees' nonprofit organization, the Brees Dream Foundation. As a part of WWE's pro social initiatives, celebrating WrestleMania 30 in New Orleans, the auction ran from March 31st through April 8th on CharityBuzz.com and featured unique once in a lifetime experiences with WWE superstars and other sports and entertainment celebrities. In addition to the online auction, a red carpet party featuring a live auction and MC by comedian, producer, and star of the hit comedy The Haunted Mansion 2, Marlon Wayans, was held at the New Orleans Museum of Art during WrestleMania week. The support from WWE and its fans has been overwhelming, said Drew Brees, the quarterback for New Orleans Saints. Proceeds from Superstars for Kids is going to a long, go a long way to improve the quality of life for so many children and their families. We are thrilled and humbled by the generosity that WWE has shown, and we are grateful that the opportunities that WrestleMania 30 has provided, said Frank Sanchez, Vice President, Sports Entertainment and Alumni Development for Boys and Girls Clubs. The support from WWE will increase our capacity to create great futures for youth of New Orleans.
WWE is committed to improving the lives of children around the world and I'm proud of that our fans stepped up to support two very deserving organizations, said Stephanie McMahon. Chief Brand Officer, WWE, the funds raised through Superstars for Kids will help to create a brighter future for so many children. <coughs> Overseas in Germany, there was an incident at an X, uh, WXW event on Saturday where WWE legend Vader refused to work. Uh, more details on the situation later, but uh, there's nothing other than this statement uh, released by WXW this morning. When Terry Funk, Chris Masters, and Steve Carino were about to get into their booked cab to the airport, Vader refused to leave his hotel room. Various attempts by our English partners, promoter, Masters, and uh, Terry Funk himself to convince Vader otherwise proved fruitless. After Vader already refused to wrestle his agreed upon match, uh, from the, uh, from the night uh, today, he he decided that despite already having received advance payment, the fact that there is a sold out meet and greet session for him, and the fact that uh, we promoted the event around him, he would not fulfill his contractual obligations. Nothing more to say on that. The authority has ordered that Dean Ambrose must defend his U.S. His WWE U.S. title against Alberto Del Rio. Ryback. And Curtis Axel in a handicap match on this Friday's SmackDown. <clears throat> this next leak is a trailer for a new documentary being done on wrestling legend, Beautiful Bobby Eaton. Yeah, maybe it's celebrating World Wish Day. If I, uh, let's make a wish today. Visit wish.org backslash forward slash WWE to find out how you can donate. Of course, they were uh, doing a... a, a, a a number on Raw doing by text, you can donate ten dollars. Tannis O'Neill worked out today with James Arnitis, the son of the Road Warrior Animal, and other members of the NFL St. Louis Rams today at the Rams Training Center. Seth Rollins tweeted the following about the big six man match at Extreme Rules. Quote Six days. Evolution versus the Revolution. Cage the Animal. Cut the head off the snake. And change the game. Hashtag rise up. Unquote. According to wrestling DVD news.com, Amazon now has a listing for a new WWE Men of Mayhem DVD to be released on June 17th with a $10.45 price tag and early release date. It could just be a double pack of past titles. The Shield granted a make a wish. Uh, at this weekend's uh, WWE Live event in Peoria, Illinois. This was likely the Shield's first wish as a trio and a photo that I'll post at the end of the video. Also, uh, their me meeting with Jesse. If I can find the photo, I don't think I've got it yet. Maybe I'll we'll post it. Advertise from today's network event schedule showing. World Class Championship Wrestling show at 3 a.m. Uh, was a tape from April 29th, night, uh, 1983. The 4 a.m. show was a tape from October 14, 1982. The 5 a.m. show was from November 1st, 1982. And the 6 a.m. Uh, block was uh, from November the 11th, 1982. Adam Rose was on the road with WWE this weekend, picking up wins over Heath Slater. Their match on Saturday night in Rockford was described as a comedy match, but the character got over great with the crowd. Bo Dallas also worked the show, doing a Bo Lee promo and defeating Justin Gabriel. Noted before that WWE was asking talent to come up with names for their finishing moves. Rosa Mendez answered the call of uh, revealing on Instagram. And I'll show that paper uh, as well at the end of the video. Uh, she has called it the Rosa's Thorn. And again, it's uh, being uh, in, in the picture. It's been used on the tiger at a live event from this past weekend. And now, what everybody's been waiting for? Raw from April 28, 2014. Tonight's Raw pre-show. 
opened up with Josh Matthews, Booker T, and Alex Riley, and a special guest, Santino Morella. Matthews hyped tonight's show as Santino hopes that he can live up to the pre-show standards. Uh, Matthews plugged Hugh Jackman's appearance for later. Riley talked about the Usos defending against Ryback and Curtis Axel. Booker reveals that Roman Reigns will face Randy Orton in a singles action tonight. Uh, Matthews shows us footage from Kane destroying Daniel Bryan from last week's so Raw. We come back to the panel and they talk about how Stephanie McMahon will apologize to Bryan tonight. We says that Sin Cara take, taking on what looks like Damian Sando in the ring for superstars. Matthews hypes extreme rules as we see Bray Wyatt's promo from last week and the match against John Cena. The panel talks about Wyatt versus Cena. Riley says Wyatt is taking some of Cena's fans. And we go to network promos. We'll come back and the panel talks about the Shield versus Evolution as the crowd pops for Natalia coming out for a Superstars match. Her opponent is Tamina Snooker. Matthews hypes Reigns versus Orton for later. And they talk about Rob Van Dam versus Badius Bear in tonight's tournament final. We get a look back at last week's tournament matches. Renee, Renee Young backstage with Barrett. Barrett says he actually has some good news tonight because the WWE Universe will only have to suffer through Big E for six more days. On Sunday, he's going to have some very bad news for Big E. Booker, Booker predicts Barrett will get the win tonight. Riley hopes Big E gets Barrett and beats him for, for, for saying he has no personality. Emma pops up on the pre-show and scares Santana with her cobra. When we come back for more network promos. Byron Sackles is backstage with the Usos and they're not worried about losing the title to Ryback and Curtis Jackson tonight. We go back to the panel as Jerry the King Lawler makes his way out to a pop. Uh, Matthews plugs Hugh Jackson's appearance one more time and they talk about Orton versus Reigns. Booker predicts Orton will win as does Santino. Riley predict, predicts Reigns and that's it for the pre-show. Law opens up with a, with a video for Bray Wyatt and John Cena. We're live from the Scott Trade Center as Michael Cole saw welcomes us to a steel cage as it's sort of lowered in the, uh, around the ring. Of course, there's no match. John Cena's music hits and out comes, out he comes to a mixed reaction. Cena enters the cage and, and, and the, as the announcer's hyping tonight's show, Cena isn't joking around tonight. He seems upset as he waits uh, for the crowd to calm him down. Cena says, why? Twice. I was thinking, why? 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 Well. <clears throat> Cena asked fans why they voted him in a match against all three members of the Wyatt family last week. A new suck chanted uh, started up, and Cena says, Time has changed, but he doesn't blame the fans for that. Cena says he has some good time with the fans, but through it all, good or bad, he's never abandoned any fans and always put the WWE first. Cena asks, Why are the fans drawn to Wyatt? Cena knows that they're, they're going to. Come a time when he has to step aside. Then he gives a prop to Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, Cesaro, and Daniel Bryan. Cena then names Adrian Neville and Sami Zayn from NXT, saying that they have her, they have heart and passion. Cena says Wyatt is dangerous. Then it goes on, but is interrupted by the white flash on the screen. Lights go down, and a little child starts singing. Well, he's got the whole world in his hands, and the crowd starts singing along with him. But to my recollection, I only heard a choir voice, didn't see the choir, and all of a sudden, they show kids all on the stage, up the rampway, and they're all dressed in black. Of course, well, some of the kids are young, I'll say third, fourth graders, all the way up to high school age. <clears throat> As I was uh, saying earlier in, in the thing, it's a, it's a local kids choir from the local schools. Lights came on, and not just one kid, it's an entire kid's choir on stage, singing the song. We're all dressed up in black robes. Bray finally appears with Eric Rowe and Luke Harper. Bray sings along, and the kids follow up to the cage. They change it to the whole Cena Nation, Cena Nation, and in his hands, as Bray says, let's change it to, we've got the whole Cena Nation in his hands. And the kids surround the cage, and they're all wearing sheep masks. Of course, they all, the arena went dark before that happened. As the lights came back on and they're all wearing cheap masks, Bray laughs well from his rocking chair with one of the kids on his knee as we go to commercial. 
And it looks like he's holding him by the back of his, his or her shirt. Uh, we come back to see what just happened with Ray Wyatt uh, and his fire. Tag team title matches up first. Right back to versus the Usos. We go to the ring out comes match number one. Tag team champions, the Usos. And then right back to was out next. Justin Roberts uh, formally introduces. <clears throat> Before the match, then Axel starts things off with Jimmy Uso. Ryback ends up tra tagging in with Jay. And they go at it. Ryback hits a scoop slam but misses a splash. Jimmy comes in for some double teaming and they toss Ryback out of the ring and then drop Axel as he runs in. The Usos run the ropes and leap out onto Ry Ryback and Axel. Uh, one of the Usos sells a leg injury. Looks like he twisted his ankle as we go to commercial. Back from the break, Axel is in control of Jimmy. During the break, a trainer came out to check on Jay, Jay's uh, leg. Axel kept control of uh, Jimmy in the ring. Ryback comes in and they double team Jimmy. Jimmy fights them both off and uh, off, off the top rope and sends them to the mat. Jay tags in, finally goes up to the top. Jay nails a crossbody on Axel for a two count. Jay then beats down on Axel in the corner and kicks back. Jay with a big Samoan drop on Axel. Jay sells the injury. Again, and he nails the backsplash on Axel in the corner. Two count. Ryback comes back in for some double teaming. Ryback nails a spine buster for a close two count. Uso blocks a meat hoop clothesline with a big super kick, but uh, Ryback kicks out at two. Ryback nails a big clothesline and then goes for a shell shot on the Uso beside. He slid out. And roll right back up for another close, close two count. Axel tagged in for some double teaming. But it's blocked as Ryback got kicked out of the ring. Axel nails a perfect flex, but it's on the wrong man as Jimmy nails a big super fly splash for the win. Usos retain. Full stop mentioned Extreme Rules won't be available on Dish Network or Direct TV, but it will be on the WWE Network. They hype Roman Reigns versus Randy Orton. Then we go to commercial. Back for the break. We get an Adam Rose vignette, and he will debut next week. Cesaro is backstage with Paul Heyman. Heyman is disappointed with Rob Van Dam for speaking out against him. Heyman says he takes his clients to the top. Cesaro said that's all he needed to hear. We get a look at Kane and Daniel Bryan from last week's Raw. Still to come segment. Uh, man, Stephanie will apologize to Bryan. Back from the break, and we get a creepy shot of Kane's mask backstage in a box. Sheamus versus Titus O'Neil was next. As we go right to the ring, out comes Sheamus. Before he can get down the ramp, Titus O'Neil attacks him from behind on stage. Titus beats Sheamus down to the ramp and causes him into the barrier. Titus rolls Sheamus in the ring and continues the assault. The referee broke it up and he checks on Sheamus. The bell rings and Titus keeps up the attack. Out of nowhere, Sheamus connects with a broke kick for the win. <clears throat> Hugh Jackson goes out next. Uh, back to commercial. Back from the break, we get another Bo Dallas visit. We come to the ring and Dolph Ziggler is awaiting in the a ring. Dolph talks about how this is his favorite time of the year because the girls get hotter, the bikinis get tighter, and the superheroes return to the big screen. Ziggler leads us to a trailer for the new X-Men movie. Ziggler then introduces the Wolverine himself. Out comes Jackman to a big pop and we see the incident between Jackman and Ziggler from a while back. It was actually uh, 2012. And they make up, uh, and out comes Damien Sandow dressed up as Magneto. He comes to the ring, and they rag on him. Sandow is the ultimate geek here. Uh, Jackman asks the, uh, to touch the uh, cape and says it's awesome. Sandow tries to use his magnetic powers. A goofy sound plays, and it appears that Sandow is using his powers to pull the microphone from Jackman's hand. Of course, he's acting like it's pulling it towards him. I was expecting him uh, just to pull, pull it right towards his face and pop him <laughs> with the microphone. Well, Jackman struggles and he jabs the mic down at Sandow, throws it down. And then nails a hit toss and Ziggler hits the zigzag. And Coleslaw says Jackman and Ziggler just saved the WWE Universe from a villain. Get a vi uh, video for Evolution versus The Shield. And then we get Swagger versus Cesaro. Back for the break, out comes Zeb Coulter with Jack Swagger. Paul Heyman was out next. He does a knock, knock joke, and it's Mike. Mike Kleinick, the streak. <clears throat> Heyman promises not to talk about the streak anymore. He starts hyping up Cesaro, and out comes 
Cesaro with his new music? Eh, it's okay. Nothing more than that to me. Starts out as like a siren, and then some other, other music. How many other uh, rushers came out with a siren? There's always pop, big pop and pop, and some others. Yeah, Cesaro takes control early on with a gut wrench slam. Swagger goes to the floor for a break. Cesaro with a big boot through the ropes. Cesaro with a double axe handle off the rape run. Swagger returns it around and brings Cesaro back in for a two count. Swagger sends Cesaro into the ring post and nails a big close out for another two. Swagger kept control. Went for another pin attempt. Cesaro turns around and nails a suplex. And then Zeb grabs Cesaro's leg, allowing Swagger to drop some. Cesaro, Hammond comes over and grabs Zeb's mustache as he's uh, grabbing himself and does a little uh, twirling thing like he's posing. And that distracted Swagger, Cesaro nailed German suplex for the win. No Cesaro swing this week. So I guess the ratings of all just drop. Uh, Zeb has word with, with Cesaro after the match. Heyman and Cesaro celebrate as Zeb and Swagger look on from the ramp. We can look back at earlier where Bray Wyatt brought out a choir. Renee is backstage with Cena. He asks him for comments on what happened, and he's specious as he walks off as he goes to commercial. Back from the break, we get another creepy look at Kane's mask backstage in a see-through case. <coughs> Cody Rhodes versus Alberto Del Rio. What's up next? We come back, and Alberto waits on as Cody and Goldust are making their entrance. Del Rio attacks Cody as he's shaking hands with his brother as they show the. Uh, what did earlier of uh, the uh, mishaps of the uh, brothers uh, disagreeing as Cody walked off in, in a, after one of their losses? <clears throat> well, Del Rio kept control and knocked Cody out of the corner. Del Rio with a suplex for a two count. Cody, Cody turns a, around and nails a clothesline. Cody was through Sam the pin attempt. Del Rio took back control and back, back, back dropped Cody for a two count. Del Rio with a headlock. Cody came back and hit a drop kick. Cody misses the clothesline and Del Rio catches him with a tilt the world backbreaker. For two, Del Rio with a super kick and a two count. Del Rio with another headlock and Cody takes the, kicks Del Rio but gets knocked out of midair. Del Rio then delivers a super kick to the face and cross arm breaker for the tap out. And after the match, Goldust tries to talk to Cody but Cody shows him away again. Okay. Cody follows Cody up the ramp and Del Rio celebrates in the ring, smiles. Still to come segment, and Stephanie will apologize to Brian and back again back to commercial. And then we get the uh, squash match of the evening, Alexander Rusev versus Xavier Woods. Well, to my disappointment, uh, uh, they come back from the break, out comes Lana to introduce Alexander Rusev, R-Truth, and Xavier Woods at ringside. Well, that was going to be my guess, is uh, one of the two. Well, that's not other than Xavier Woods. Rusev dominates the match and goes for the accolade. Just that, just before Xavier taps out, Truth interferes. Zach Rusev for the disqualification. So, Alexander Rusev stays on the feed. After the bell, Truth kept beating on Rusev and kicked him out of the ring. Rusev took another kick on the apron. Come back, and uh, but Woods knocks him off the apron. Lan Lana called call Rusev. A ringside, and he stares him down as he backs up the ramp. Pulsar shows us videos of Cena. Granny wishes from earlier today. We come back and we see three fans at ringside. Those are the three that Cena Granny wishes from. Renee backstage with RVD. Zeb walks up and asks if he wants to join the real Americans. RVD turns him down and says he's just going to keep being RVD. Back to commercial. Then we get Los Matadors versus Heath Slater and Drew McIntyre. Maybe. Back to the right. Both teams are out. Horse Walk on our Torino are also there with, and we'll face each other in, in a we, we'll see match on the Extreme Rules. I guess it's a we, L, C. I guess it's a two we, chairs and ladder. I know what that is, but we'll, we'll see. And it's also on the pre-show. Everything falls apart as Jinder Mahal gets on the floor and he's not seen again at all. Slater actually gets the win for his team. That was uh, his first win quite a while. 
And he celebrates in the ring after the match, Tor Torito springboards in and takes out, takes out the three three and B members. And that ends that segment. Uh, up next, uh, we got Stephanie Will apologizing to Daniel Bryan. Back to commercial. Back from the break. And Sheamus vs. Ray Wright is announced for the main event. Or main, uh, main event TV show. <coughs> no longer on the TV. Just reminding you, it's not on Ion, so don't go, go and uh, look for it. Stephanie McMahon finally makes her way out. And we see footage from earlier, from uh, last week's fall. Stephanie is ready to apologize and calls out Daniel Bryan. Finally, his music plays, and out he comes with the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. <clears throat> but no belts in hand. Bryan doesn't look happy, and he's wearing a neck brace. Also, Bree is uh, uh, with him. <coughs> he also doesn't, uh, like I said, he doesn't have a belt with him. Fan chant for Bryan's name as he speaks from the stage. Bryan says he's almost believed Stephanie McMahon when she said she wanted. Kane to stop the attack last week. Brian says everyone knows Stephanie is full of crap. Hey, yes, chat starts up. Stephanie says she's earned that. She doesn't blame Brian when she needs to. She needs him to understand. Stephanie says she and Triple H have never wanted Brian to be a champion. That's no secret. Brian talks about how Bree felt when they were doing so many bad things to him. Stephanie goes on and says she's incredible sorry for what has happened. Brian says the fans agree when he says that she's still full of crap. Another yes champ starts out. Stephanie says she doesn't know how else to prove it unless Brian comes to the ring and looks at her eyes to eyes. So she, she can convince him. Brian says he's still going to see her, uh, see her as a liar. Brian knows Stephanie can call Kane out to do something to him. Or his wife. Brian says he. <clears throat> Brian says his head hurts and I mean, it hurts bad and he can't move his neck, but he doesn't come back down for, for a fight. He says doctors have cleared him for extreme rules and he is not giving up. Brian promises that if Kane takes him down, he's taking Kane down with him. Straight to hell. Stephanie says that she doesn't even know where Kane is. She says his mask has been locked up in her office. Stephanie says that maybe she can make it up and Bree can compete. She talks about Tamina Snuka versus Paige at, uh, at Extreme Rules. However, it will be Bree versus Paige tonight for the title. Stephanie, Stephanie is fine with Brian being at ringside. Stephanie says that match starts now. Before we get the title match, we'll leave the title match. And it's the old Kane uh, interrupting in the, in the match. So Paige keeps the, keeps the title. And it's unknown if uh, she's going to be added as a triple threat to the match at Extreme Rules. As Bree heads down the ring, to the ring, with Brian behind her about 15, 20 feet. Stephanie finally exits the ring, camera cuts backstage, and we see Kane's mask is gone from the case. Back to commercial, back from the break. Nevis Championship match. Uh, uh, champion Paige is out. They lock up and Paige takes B to the mat. They trade holes and Paige jumps to her feet. Brian is looking paranoid at ringside. Bree with a one count. Paige with a kick. Paige tosses Bree across the ring by her hair. Paige with Stompson in the corner. Paige with a fisherman suplex on, on for a two count. Bree fights back, but Paige throws her into the ropes. Paige with knees to the gut on the apron. Paige screams some more and the fans pop. Bree makes a comeback, but Paige cuts her off on the top turnbuckle. Paige nails the super flex, and then Kane's fire suddenly goes off, and his music hits. Brian guards the ring and waits on Kane. Kane's fist pops up from under the from the middle of the ring. Tries to pull Bree under the ring, but Brian comes in for the save. Kane shows him off and tries to pull Bree through the hole. Kane shows Brian out of the ring again. Kane climbs back up. He climbs up. And out of the hole in the ring and grabs Bree by her leg. Brian grabs a wrench from under the ring and, and lays Kane out with it. In the middle of the ring, Brian checks on, on Bree and tells her to run away. Kane goes up and chokes on Brian. Neck brace and all. Bree comes back from uh, back screaming for Brian. Kane grabs Bree and pulls her through the hole. She kicks him in the face and runs out of the ring to check on Brian. The other officials are taking on, on Brian. Kane stands back up in the ring. As officials are helping Brian at the ramp, 
K makes the pyro explode, and, and they just uh, fall down. And uh, K starts laughing as they go to commercial. Back from the break, announcers are talking about what just happened. Then we see Brian and Bree back in the trainer's, trainer's room. Stephanie walks in and apologizes. She asks the trainer if Brian can compete in Extreme Rules. Brian says he will be there. But Stephanie will regret dragging his wife into this. Bree screams for Stephanie to get out and calls her a bitch. Stephanie mumbles while she's sorry and walks out with her head down. We get another look at Bray Wyatt's choir from earlier. When they outside Tina's dressing room this time, he apologizes for ignoring her earlier as he came out. He says that the children in sheet masks didn't sit well with him. Cena says he got so caught up in Wyatt's mind games that he went out and thought WWE fans turned their back on him. Well, that at my point was I thinking that Cena's heel turn. Well, Cena says they haven't, and he's proud of, of that. Cena says that the mind game stopped on Sunday. He says he has special plans for Bray at Extreme Rules. Cena says Wyatt will not have the whole world in his hands. He will have Cena's fist in his face and his foot in his ass. Even my mom was watching the show at that time, and uh, she was laughing at it. <clears throat> WWE Intercontinental Title Tournament Final. Bad News Barrett versus RVD. We go to the ring, and Bad News Barrett is out on, on his podium. Barrett has some bad news for Rob Van Dam. Barrett says RVD is no longer relevant. Barrett says he was in diapers the last time RVD was in, had the Intercontinental title. Barrett say, uh, does the BNB shoulder point instead of RVD, BNB. As we go to commercial, back from the break, Justin Roberts introducing. Rob Van Dam comes up to a big pop and they lock up and they break up. And RVD works on the arm, Barrett with a right hand, and RVD with arm drag. Barrett fights out with a headlock, but RVD dumps him over the top rope. RVD with a drop kick through the ropes. RVD barely connects with a moon top. From the apron, RVD brings him back for a two count. Barrett sends RVD to the floor, tosses him into the barrier. As Barrett mocking RVD, Barrett slams RVD's face first into the announcer's table and then brings him back in the ring for a two count. Barrett gets a right hand, uh, gets some right hands in. RVD with a kick. And then a scissors take down for a two count. RVD with more offense in the corner. As RVD ends up connecting a huge kick to the gut. As we go to commercial break, back from the break, and Barrett has. RVD down in a headlock. RVD makes a comeback. But Barrett and Ezra have changed for a close two count. Barrett drops a big elbow for another pin attempt. Barrett with more offense in the corner. Barrett with a neck breaker and a knee to the spine. RVD blocks the knee and roll Barrett up for two count. RVD with a kick to the jaw. RVD gets a, sec gets a crowd hyping. But Barrett dodges a rolling thunder. RVD with two clotheslines, but RVD nails a big block. RVD with a big block and a kick. Cesaro comes uh, to ringside, gets on the apron. RVD has words with him. Swagger runs down and pulls Cesaro off and hits head, head, his head on the apron. And they brawl at ringside as Cesaro tosses Swagger over the barrier. RVD turns around and ducks the ball hammer. RVD drops a bear uh, with a kick. RVD hits Rolling Thunder. RVD goes for the ball hammer. I say RVD goes. Uh, to the top for the five star fox slash, but Cesaro runs up, distracts him. He sets off, and Cesaro also uh, got knocked off the apron. Already hits the fox slash, but Barrett got his knees up. Barrett hit the bull hammer for the win and, and the title shot extreme, at extreme rules. And is now your new number one contender for the Intercontinental title. After the match, Heyman looked on from ringside as Cesaro entered the ring and stomped away on RVD. Swagger makes the save. And beats on Cesaro in the corner. Well, I thought they were going, they were getting the uh, swagger with RVD up. Well, swagger now the gut wrist power bomb. Zeb Coulter was out now. Swagger beats RVD around the ring. RVD blocks a shot and kicks swagger in the, in the face. RVD gets a uh, thrust kick to send swagger out of the ring. RVD goes up top, but, uh, for a fall splice and nails it on Cesaro. And then RVD's music hits and then heads to the back. The announcers ex well, hyping extreme rules. And we see footage from the Shield from Friday SmackDown. 
the show cuts a backstage promo on Evolution. Then we go to a commercial. Randy Orton versus Roman Reigns was up next. Back from the break, and out comes Triple H, Batista, and Randy Orton. The two evolution theme. Triple H takes a mic and talks about the Shield checking out everyone on SmackDown. He admits he's impressed. He says the Shield are starting to remind him of evolution. Orton and Batista chime in and say that the, the, the Shield will never be them. Triple H says he brought them into this world, and evolution is going to take them out. Okay. Triple H says the Shield will either adapt or perish at a tree move. Shield's music, uh, music hit and out they come to the, through the crowd. And also at the same time, Ric Flair's music hits after they enter the ring. Before the match starts, Flair takes his time coming down the ramp. Batista applauds Flair and the Shield looks worried. <clears throat> Flair greets Evolution and hugs him. Flair takes a mic and talks about all of the fun that he's had in St. Louis. Flair says it's great being in the ring again with men that stand for what this business is all about. Dominance. He uh, pauses for a second. Flair then talks about being with the four horsemen. Flair says he has seen everything come full circle, including greatness. Flair says he's surrounded by superstars who exemplify power. Style of grace, Flair says, but what he's talking about is the shield. The crowd pops, Flair shakes the hands of all three shield members. Evolution looks on confused as Flair just left the ring. <coughs> Rain strikes first to start the match. Orton fights back and sends Reigns to the floor. <coughs> they ball on the floor. Orton goes for a suplex, but Reigns fights it off. Reigns drops Orton on the floor with a suplex of his own. Reigns with more offense on the floor. Orton counters and whips Reigns into the ring steps. Orton brings him back in the ring for a two count and keeps control of Reigns. Orton sends Reigns back to the floor and brings him in, but can't hit the draping DDT. Reigns comes back with a clothesline out of the corner. Reigns ducks the clothesline and hits a big forearm. Reigns gets a clothesline and right hand in the corner. Reigns with a big drop kick on the apron. On Orton, Batista distracts Reigns. Triple H uh, grabs Reigns' leg. As the referee's not looking to see in this, Rollins and Ambrose come over to brawl with Triple H and Batista. Triple H then uh, sends Ambrose flying over the announcer's table. Rollins is down. Underneath the announcer's table. What? Yeah, underneath the announcer's table. Reigns nails a big Superman punch on Orton in the ring. Reigns comes down and comes out and brawls with Batista. And Triple H as the bell rings. Reigns fights off Batista and Triple H. Orton runs over and Evolution beats down Reigns on the floor. Evolution beats on, down all, all of the shield. And they're all on the floor. Ambrose takes a fine bust on the floor from Triple H. Orton poses as, as the fans pop. Batista st stomps on Ambrose some more. They roll the shield into the ring for some more beatdown. Momentarily, Ambrose stumbles to his feet. Charges it to uh, Triple H. Clotheslines him. Triple H goes for a pedigree on Ambrose, but Rollins springboards in with a drop kick. The shield pop back. Orton gets tossed to the floor. Batista gets kicked it to the floor. Reigns speared Triple H as he sells it big time. They go for a triple power bomb on Triple H, but in comes Batista and Orton with chairs, but they got kicked, uh, got knocked right back to the floor. Triple H escaped the ring, and Orton and Batista join them on the ramp. The Shield stand tall in the ring with chairs as Raw goes off the air with both teams staring each other down and talking trash. Raw backstage pass, post show opens up with a panel talking about what just happened on how Ric Flair endorsed the Shield. We talk more about the big six man match at Extreme Rules when they backstage with Flair. He tells her not to read too much into his endorsement. He says, To be the man, you gotta beat the man. Right now, the man is the evolution. We go back to the panel. The man is evolution. Hmm. Panel talks about what ha uh, what happened with Kane, Daniel Bryan, Brie Bella, and Stephanie McMahon tonight. We get more replays from Raw. Panel talks about Bray Wyatt's choir. They announced RVD versus Cesaro. RVD versus Cesaro versus Swagger for the pay per view, and it's now a and that's it for the post show. <clears throat> and WWE confirmed that tonight's Raw is St. Louis at 
2014 Survivor Series pay-per-view will be held in no on November 23rd at the Scott Trade Center. Pre-sale code is SURVIVOR. After Raw went off the air in St. Louis, John Cena came out for the dark match main event. Wyatt family was out next to a big pop. Cena ended up wrestling Bray Wyatt in a singles match. The match went long. I saw interference from Eric Rowan and Luke Harper for disqualification. So Cena won the, by disqualification and then hit the opportunity adjustment on all the Wyatts here in the show. Well, thanks for you and peace out. God bless.